In the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver, Canada, Apollo Anton Ono would add in a very strange warm-up behavior as part of his routine before his race. If you guessed, you got it. Yawning. This unexpected approach from the most decorated American Winter Olympic athlete of all time holds a profound secret. It's linked to the vagus nerve. Join me as we go over this connection and how it might have benefited him as well as going over several everyday activities and one new one that naturally stimulate your vagus nerve. Now, do you have trouble with rumination or excessive thinking? And then does this result in a lot of anxiety, stress, a lack of sleep or other related issues? What we're gonna be going over today are a bunch of things that you likely already do in your life. And if you keep mindfully and consciously focusing on them, they have the power to make a large difference. Now, quick disclaimer, although I'm a registered psychologist, I'm not your psychologist. Remember, everything here is for educational and informational purposes only, and none of this is advice about your mental health. Please talk to your doctor or other mental health professional before trying anything in these videos or making any decisions about your health. Now let's quickly talk about the vagus nerve and then jump into these everyday activities. There are many ways to work with rumination anxiety, but today we're gonna to focus on body-based approaches. In another video later, I'll talk about mind and thought-based approaches to work with thinking challenges and rumination. Now what the heck is the vagus nerve? The vagus nerve is one of the main components of our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest system. This system helps us feel calm and present and connected. The vagus nerve is the 10th cranial nerve and it begins in our brain stem and connects to various organs and tissues, including our heart, our lungs, our digestive tract, our liver, spleen, and a lot of other areas. There are many important functions of this nerve, including aiding in our digestion, our immune response, our stress and emotional management, our engagement socially with others, and much, much more. You may have been hearing quite often about this vagus nerve, whether it be from friends, family, maybe a health practitioner that you're working with. And the research on it is relatively new regarding its connection to our mental health and quite promising. So let's go into the several everyday activities that are very common and you're likely already doing most of these, which stimulate the rest and digest response of your vagus nerve. Can you guess the first one? There's a common saying that laughter is the best medicine. Yes, believe your eyes when I say it. Laughter, and even fake laughter, can trigger a vagal nerve response. Have you ever had a small or a big laugh by yourself or with others, and then noticed how you felt after? It tends to feel pretty good. Laughter engages our diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscle that is located at the bottom of your lungs and just above your stomach. This muscle flattens when you inhale and relaxes on your exhale. If you don't know where your diaphragm is, take three fingers and place it above your belly button and sniff. If you didn't notice it there, sniff harder. What you might notice is that your diaphragm moves outwards on the sniff and that's the muscle right there. The vagus nerve is connected to our diaphragm and when we activate it, we engage in that wonderful parasympathetic nervous system, increasing a sense of calm. So in any way that you can, try to get some laughter in your day, whether it be with others or just by yourself. Maybe you watch a funny show on TV, Netflix, YouTube. Find something that makes you laugh. For some people, maybe it's America's Funniest Home Videos, or maybe it's just cute videos of babies and cats, or of prank videos, whatever is in your wheelhouse, find a way to laugh. While you're here, let me give it a go. Why did the scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Did that do it? If not, that's okay. I recently became a dad and I'm working on harnessing my dad jokes so that I can torture my son when he's a bit older. Now the next skill is deep breathing. Focusing on our exhales to be longer then our inhales taps right into our vagus nerve. A way we know if we're tuning into this breathing is by laying down on the ground and placing a light book or a piece of paper on your stomach, right above your belly button. You should see the 
paper or book rise on your inhale. And when you exhale, it should fall down. This in fact will let us know that we are engaging our diaphragm, getting into that deeper belly breathing, rather than just that chest breathing up in this area. Upper chest breathing is often associated with a lot of activity and anxiety. One practice I like to do is the four, seven, eight. You inhale for four seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, and do a long exhale, either through your nose or through your mouth for eight seconds. When you do this, counting in your head can also be beneficial to really get you to be focused in on the breathing exercise. And the nice thing about this is you can often do it without anybody noticing. Let's give it one go. Get you to inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, how does this breathing work? Well, if you guess through the diaphragm, you got it. Similar to laughter, when we're engaging our diaphragm through breathing, we tap right into that rest and digest system. Now, the next one I wanna share with you is humming. Humming is a very common thing. You might catch yourself doing it while you're doing a task, in the shower, while you're working, listening to music, the radio. Now there's a variety of info out there on different kinds of practices of humming through things like yoga, where they focus on different kinds of range and pitches. But the quick tip here is that you can add this in daily, almost at any time, usually anywhere, depending on the context, and that can help stimulate our vagus nerve. So one way I'm going to invite you to do this is make sure that you're focusing on a very low hum, very low pitch. When you practice this, you might notice that the vibration is in a lower area of your body, likely around your stomach region. And if you've been following so far, you know what that does. So try it with me for a few seconds. Maybe if it helps, take a hand and place it gently on your stomach to help you notice where the sensations are when you hum with a low pitch. What I'll invite you to do is hum, and you can imagine just the letter M repeatedly and we'll focus with a lower pitch for a while, just like this. Now you give it a go. Now, if you didn't notice much, one thing that you can do is you can just adjust the pitch a little bit and notice what happens in your body as you do that. Check it out. I'll do a few different hums at different pitches and I'll point to the areas that I notice it in my body as I do it. As I went through that, I noticed that the lower pitch was quite low, and then the medium range one moved actually up in my body, kind of to my upper chest, and then when I went to the high pitch, up in my throat. So focus on the lower ones, get into that belly area. This next activity might be common for you to do every morning and evening. Can you guess what that is? Well, if you guessed, the activity is gargling. Gargling activates the vocal cords, which is in our larynx. The vagus nerve is connected to this area of our throat and the vibration of the gargling stimulates the nerve. So if you're about to go into a situation that brings some worry or some anxiety, such as public speaking, setting boundaries, or asking for something that you need, for example, head to the washroom, put a little bit of water in your mouth and get some gargling going. Then maybe you hum a tune. And then you do this next strategy I'm about to tell you on the way out of the washroom. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Maybe, yeah, maybe not. But anyways, if your guest's singing, you're right. Similar to gargling, singing activates the vagus nerve in the same way through our vocal cords. You might notice that when you sing, your heart rate may slow down, your breathing might slow down, Depending on what you're singing, of course, if it's a really big upbeat one, it might activate you, but that is not necessarily always a bad thing. So that can kind of bring energy within our body if we're feeling a bit lower. But singing can also help in those anxiety moments and make you feel a bit more connected, calm, and relaxed. So try some intentional singing 
Or maybe the next time that you catch yourself singing without really noticing it, say when you're doing a task, singing in the shower, when cooking, take a moment to notice what happens in your body. Maybe your heart rate begins to change and slow down, and maybe your breathing also slows down. Or you might just notice a better sense of feeling grounded. And remember, add that in on the way out of that washroom when you're going for that event that brings a lot of anxiety. Now the next activity is what I call pet connection. Not everyone owns a pet and not everyone is a pet person. That's okay. But pets, whether they're your own or somebody else's, can create an amazing connection with us that activates our vagus nerve. Have you ever experienced like anxiety or worry or were overwhelmed and your cat or your dog has come to your side, maybe licking you somewhere on your face, nudging you with their snout or nose, or placing their paw on you or putting their head underneath your arm or armpit? Or have you noticed when you walk through the door after a long day of work and your furry friend is very excited to greet you? That feeling that we get in those moments is because our pet is attuning and connecting with us. Snuggling up releases oxytocin, which is known as the love hormone, and is a feeling good hormone that is present when we're close to someone or something. That closeness can be both physical, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. This connected space activates that rest and digest system directly through your vagus nerve. And sometimes, depending on the things that we've been through in our lives, we can actually feel more safe and connected with our pets than sometimes with other people. So if that is something that you notice for yourself, I'd invite you continue to connect with your animals to bring that calm state in your nervous system so that you can eventually, at your own pace, slowly branch out to connecting with other people that feel safe. Oh, and I forgot to mention horses. Horses are also amazing for this. They tune into our nervous system as well. So keep snuggling up. Your nervous system will thank you for it. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry, that wasn't you. You're not boring me. And, I, and I'm not exactly exhausted, but quite the opposite. Remember Apollo that I was talking about at the beginning of our video? Well, he would incorporate this yawning right before his race, even if it was a forced yawning. So strange. Well, but is it? Apollo has eight Olympic medals, including two gold medals. And he has said that yawning helps him let the oxygen in and get the nerves out. And it makes him feel better. Well, of course, there's more to his routine than just yawning to make him such a supreme athlete. But perhaps he's onto something. Now, one unfortunate piece with his statement is that yawning doesn't let more oxygen in. But Dr. Andrew Newberg a neuroscientist and author of several books, encourages yawning even when you're not tired. Some explanations for this is that yawning may help us with our focus and attention. And when we're focused and more attentive to what we're doing, that definitely tunes right in to our calming system. Now, of course, more research is around this, but yawning has been quite encouraged. Take notice how you feel after you yawn. Sometimes me even saying yawn or you seeing me yawn, yawning is contagious, so you might start yawning on your own, feel a bit more tired, and that might not necessarily be a bad thing. However, one thing to consider is that excessive yawning after any particular activity or excessive yawning in general is something that you want to check out with your doctor, as excessive yawning can be linked to several other medical conditions. And now we're at the new activity that I want to share with you. It might be new for some of you, but maybe not for others. What it is, is mindful eating. Not being mindful of what you eat, although that's important too, but being present and focused when you eat. This may seem confusing, so, so hold on. Often when we eat, we can get into habits of eating and watching TV. Maybe we're watching something on Netflix or we're scrolling through our phone on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it might be. We might be reading, we might be reading an article, reading a book, reading something on our phone, or we might be listening to music or listening to a podcast or something else that has our attention in two different areas at once. All of this would be multitasking. And then we are not 100% present with what we're eating. And I must confess, 
I'm guilty of this too sometimes. But why be present with our food? That kind of sounds boring. Well, when we're not present, we can eat too quickly and overeat. And this bypasses our stomach signal of telling us that we're full, which then can increase stress on our nervous system and can lead to digestion problems. It typically takes about 20 minutes or longer for your brain to realize it's time to put that fork down. Now, one of my former clients, he used to eat a lot of Big Macs from McDonald's. He would often eat while on the go, while he was working, or while he was doing any sort of activity at home, typically watching TV. He said he absolutely loved Big Macs. And I invited him then to do a little bit of mindful eating exercise with me, really just focusing on what he was doing in that moment, the taste, the smell, the look, the texture in his mouth, really just being in the moment with his food. Interestingly enough, he came to me after we gave it a go and he let me know that he is going to be stopping eating Big Macs and doing his best to stop eating Big Macs. The reason is, is because he really noticed as he was mindfully eating how salty it was and how it kind of made him a bit repulsed and a bit disgusted. Whereas before he, he didn't pay attention to any of that. It was quite something. Several months later, he still remained not eating Big Macs, so I was pretty impressed. When we eat mindfully, like I mentioned, focusing on how the food smells, how it tastes, how it feels in our mouth with the texture, we slow down the speed of how we eat, allowing our stomachs to digest properly, allowing the vagus nerve to send signals from our stomach to our brain to let us know we're full. And this allows our digestive system to work optimally without it being overloaded with too much food too fast. And you'll know if you've eaten too much too quickly. It's also often pretty uncomfortable. Maybe you feel bloated, maybe you have an upset stomach, you might feel a little bit sick or nauseous. Again, guilty of it. So I'm constantly working on mindful eating too. So give it a try. The next time you have a snack or a meal, let's say you sit down and you spend about 10 minutes typically eating. You don't have to do it the whole time. Give it a go. Maybe try 30 seconds to a minute of really just focusing in. All information is good information and you're going to gather a lot of data from that and decide how you want to do this kind of activity moving forward. Now, if you incorporate these regular activities into your day to day life, you'll continue to activate your vagus nerve and continue to increase a sense of calmness. Now, of course, it takes practice like anything. For example, when we lift weights at the gym, you have to keep going back over and over again to be able to increase the weights that you're lifting, reduce how your muscles get fatigued. And it doesn't happen after one time where you can go from lifting five pounds all the way up to say 20 pounds. The more you do these kinds of exercises, the more that you are doing weightlifting for your brain muscle. And that might invite a stronger sense of well-being in your day-to-day -day life. Now to continue your vagus nerve journey, check out this more technical video that I created. And it's about a quick one minute exercise that stimulates your vagus nerve that you can do pretty much anywhere at any time, just by gently moving your eyes. Remember, if this was helpful and you enjoyed what you saw today, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for more videos on the vagus nerve, mental health, trauma and psychology. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Take good care and I'll see you in the next video.